When I started this channel, one of the very first popular videos was this one about shift registers. A lot of people watched it and quite a few of them liked it. But one person wrote me a following comment. Make your life easy. Use PCF 8574 instead. It made me feel silly for a while for two reasons. The first one, nobody likes to be criticized. And the second one, I didn't have a freaking clue which electronic part is he talking about. After doing the investigation, I realized that he is talking about I2C IO Expander. I immediately bought it on AliExpress, got it, put it in a drawer where it was sitting for close to two years now, and I think it's high time to do a tutorial on it. If this is a content that you're interested in, stick around. Now let's take a closer look at the IO Expander. You can obtain it as a standalone chip, or you can do what I did and get the Expander module, which is essentially a breakout board for this chip. You can see it here in the SMD version. Let's go through the pinout of the Expander for both variants. Starting with Arduino connectivity. You can power the Expander by connecting VCC and ground to the Arduino 5 volt and ground pins. Next we have two I2C connections for data and clock that we connect to Arduino pins A4 and A5. Then we have three pins used to set the address of the expander. In the module version this corresponds to three jumpers that we can use to set up the address. Following that we have eight I.O. pins P0 to P7 And finally, there is an interrupt pin. I will cover how to use it later on. The expander modules can be daisy chained using these female header pins. Let's take a closer look at selecting the address for the expander. In the pinout section, I discussed the three pins, jumpers, used for this purpose. I will now connect the expander to Arduino by connecting VCC ground and I2C pins to Arduino pins A4 and A5. The address of our module is comprised of three common prefix bits, followed by bits defined by the state of our three jumpers. Additionally, there is one more bit that defines two complementary addresses for read and write operations. When this bit is set to zero, we end up with the address for writing, and if it is one, we get the address for reading. I don't believe we need those complementary addresses when writing Arduino sketches just sticking to the address defined by the six bits only. Let's examine our example. Currently, all three jumpers are set to zero. So we have three common bits plus three zero bits, giving us the address of 20 hex. If we want to write address, we attach zero at the end, resulting in the address of 40 hex. For the read address, we attach one at the end, giving us 41 hex. This way we can populate the rest of the table. As I'm not certain which jumper is which, we can confirm it by running the I2C scanner. You can download the code from this address. The scanner scans I2C bus and reports any connected I2C modules. Currently, our jumpers are in a position 000, and we would expect to see the address of 20 hex. Let's load the scanner onto Arduino. And as you can see, the module is properly reported. Now let's switch the bottom jumper to one, assuming it should be the least significant one, A0. After running the scanner again, we should see the address of 21. And indeed, I was correct. I2C devices connect to the I2C bus where they are identified by their unique address. For the Arduino Uno, I2C devices can be connected to analog pins A4 and A5, where A5 is a clock and A4 is a data pin. Here is our I.O. expander. Let's connect a CL pin to the clock line and the SDA pin to the data line of the I2C bus. With all address jumper set to zero, it has address of 20. If the eight extra pins provided by this module are not enough, we can add another one and connect it to the I2C bus in the same way. However, a problem arises. 
there is an address conflict, as it also has an address of 20. This problem can be resolved by toggling the first jumper to 1. This way, we change the address to 21. These I.O. expanders can coexist on the I2C bus with other devices, such as this OLED display here. We can daisy chain these uh, I.O. expander modules by connecting subsequent modules using female header pins for power and I2C connectivity. Each time, we need to make sure to assign a unique address to the new module. We need a dedicated library to work with this type of expander. There are a few different options available online, but I opted for this particular one. When you open the GitHub link, you will be able to download the zip file containing the library. In the Arduino IDE, you can then open the zip file and the library will be installed. Like any other library, it comes with a variety of examples that provide plenty of information on different ways you can utilize this IO expander. Let's demonstrate how to use the IO expander to control an LED in a sample Arduino sketch. I'll start with the standard blink sketch and then extend it to make two LEDs blink. One connected to the Arduino and the other one to the expander. For this demonstration, we'll be using Arduino Uno. The expander will be powered from the Arduino's 5 volt and ground pins and connected to the I2C bus through pins A4 and A5. The LED we want to control is a lily pad LED, which is often used in my videos due to its built-in current limiting resistor, making the wiring simpler. To enable blinking for this LED, we'll connect cathode to Arduino ground and anode to digital pin 3. In this setup, the standard blink sketch would look like this. First, we define LED pin. In the setup function, we configure this pin as an output, and in the loop, we toggle the signal to turn the LED on and off with a one second delay between each state change. Let's send it to the microcontroller and voila, LED is blinking. Now let's add one more LED into the equation. This time we'll connect the cathode to Arduino ground and the anode will go to the P0 pin on the expander. To make both LEDs blink interchangeably, we will need to make specific changes to the code. We need to declare two libraries, one of which is the one we have just installed. Then we declare the IO expander available at address 21 on the I2C bus. Additionally, we define one more LED pin, this time on the expander. In the setup, we initialize the expander module and report both success or failure in the serial monitor. Here, we also configure the second LED pin as output. Please note that the command looks similar to the one we ran for the first pin, with the only difference being PCF8574 prefix. In the loop, we add lines that will toggle the signal on the P0 pin we do it in a way that this LED will blink interchangeably with the first one. Again, we need to use the PCF8574 prefix in this section. Let's load this code onto the Arduino and... Well, the good thing is that it works. The downside is that LED connected to the expander is less bright. After reviewing the datasheet, I realized that the expander cannot draw sufficient current to fully illuminate the LED. However, Arduino can. Currently, we have connected the LED's cathode to Arduino ground and the anode through a current limiting resistor to the expander P0 pin. What if we disconnect the LED from the Arduino ground, turn it around and connect the anode through the current limiting resistor to Arduino 5 volts while connecting the cathode to expander's pin P0. This way, we would be drawing current from Arduino. Obviously, to change the logic here. Now, we would turn on the LED by providing low signal at the P0 pin and vice versa. Let's load the code to Arduino and see if it makes any difference. And indeed it does. The LED is now nice and bright and with the changed logic, it blinks together with the other one. Okay, so we were able to control a single LED from the IO expander. If we make it seven LEDs, then we can try to control a seven segment display. In this setup, 
we have the expander connected to Arduino in the same manner as previously. Then we connect expander pins P1 to P7 to the segment pins of the display. The common anode pin of the display is connected through the 220 ohm resistor to 5 volts drawing current from Arduino. In the past I created a tutorial on how to control a 7 segment display from Arduino. Let's use the code from that video as a basis. Here is the table storing segment states for each digit and a function that extracts those states and sends them to appropriate pins. First we need to adjust display digit function to send information to expander pins instead of Arduino. I won't show the entire code here, I am skipping lines like library declarations, expander declaration and initialization. For the entire code check the link in the description of this video. I will just show the assignment of expander pins to the segment pins of the display. All these pins must be declared as output. Then in a loop we have a simple for loop that executes display digit function for digits from 0 to 9 in 1 second intervals. Let's send this code to the microcontroller and see if it works. And it does. So far we are only looking at expanding the number of output pins with the expander. Let's configure a single pin to be the input pin and try to connect a push button to it. And with this push button try to control our 7 segment display. Let's edit in our setup. One side of it will be connected to the P0 pin of the expander and the other one will be connected to Arduino ground. When using the pins as inputs, the pins are set to high by the MCU which turns on the pull up to VCC. Ok, what changes do we need to make to the code? Let's label the P0 pin as button and set it to input. We can also set it to input pull up. I think in this scenario there is no difference as input pins are always pulled up to 5 volts. There is one important detail though. You have to declare the expander pins as input before initializing the expander. Otherwise this would not work. We need to change the loop function. We store the value read from the button pin to a variable and if the value is low we increment i variable. So the next time the loop function is run the next digit in line will be displayed. If we go beyond 9 we reset i back to 0. We keep the delay of 1 second. Let's load the code to the microcontroller and observe the result. It works, but it is clear that the 7 segment display reacts to the button press with a delay and at times it does not react at all. These issues are caused by the use of delays in your code. Clearly this is not the optimal way to program such functionality. This is where interrupts come into play. The expander offers just one interrupt pin that handles changes on a single or multiple pins which are set as an input. Let's connect this interrupt pin to the Arduino interrupt pin D2. In the code we start by declaring libraries first. Then we label the Arduino interrupt pin we want to use, which in our case will be digital pin 2. Here is a peculiar line of code. The declaration of the interrupt service routine without any associated code. Afterwards we declare the I2C expander similar to what we did in the previous code. But now we need to do it differently. In this case we also specify the Arduino interrupt pin to which the expander interrupt pin will be connected along with the interrupt service routine to execute when a change on any of the expander input pins is detected. Here is an integer variable that will hold the current digit to be displayed on the 7 segment display. Next we label all 7 pins of the expander corresponding to the 7 segments of the display and one pin that will be used to connect to the button. In the setup we configure 7 pins as output and one as input and only then initialize the expander. The display digit function remains unchanged. In the loop we only execute the display digit function for the current value of the i variable. Now there is another peculiar moment where we declare the interrupt service routine again, this time with specified code to be executed. In our case we increment the i variable and reset it back to 0 when it surpasses 9. Let's check if this code would work and more importantly if it would work better than the one from the previous example. It does work but the button is super sensitive. So with one press we jump through several digits. 
But this is the problem we can easily fix by introducing a simple button debouncing method. Let's introduce a variable that will hold the timestamp of the button press. In the setup, we populate this variable with millis. Now in the ISR, all we need is a simple condition that checks the timestamp against the current value returned by millis. The ISR will be executed only if 300 milliseconds have passed since the previous button press. After incrementing the i variable, we update the timestamp variable with the current value returned by millis, which becomes the timestamp of the most recent button press. It is possible to use the interrupt to serve several input pins. When the state of any of the pins P0 to P7 changes, the PCF8574 will generate an interrupt on the INT pin. The microcontroller can then read the current state of the input pins to determine which pin caused the interrupt. Let's upload the code to the Arduino and see if it makes any difference. As you can see it does. Now when I press the button, it results in immediate change of the digit shown on a 7 segment display. So we managed to control this display without exhausting the available Arduino output pins. This concludes this video. I don't know whether you noticed, but I'm getting close to 10,000 subscribers. I virtually need 400 more. So if you are watching my content and not yet subscribed, please do so and help me to cross this line. I will see you guys in my next video. Ciao!